Everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Paul Therada, as I meet you every week. How are you doing, Paul? I'm starving. Are you Are you hungry? Having this at lunchtime. <laughs> this is the uh, the morning drive with Andrew and Paul. We're giving Thanks. away tickets to go see the Who performing at TD, the TD Garden, not the real garden, the fake garden. Oh man, <laughs> the TD Garden is the real garden. But please continue. I don't know. Now, well, listen. There's only one garden. Everybody knows it's MSG, Paul. That's wow. Just one garden. Uh, Paul was in New York uh, on Tuesday, and that's why we did not do a show. Mm-hmm. I I have a story about that day, and I don't know if I should save it for the bonus show or I should talk about it Is this now. A story I, I already know about. No, no. It, oh. it 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 my everything came crashing after I left. I continued okay. drinking afterwards, and I made a lot of yeah, bad I saw decisions. You've, uh, posted. I, 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 I was thinking to myself, like you drank and ate after this. That's amazing. I did. I did. Um, it was. Jessica said it was an event to view me, to watch everything that was happening at that moment. She said it was an event. So um, maybe I'll save it for the after the show. Keep this okay. more tech based. But Paul was in New York for the Acer event. That was here in New York City. Uh, just quick, what was it about? Did you enjoy it? Did you get anything? What happened? <laughs> it was unusual. Um, the So it was a press event for what is now going to be a biannual thing that they do. And so uh, Acer's thought is that uh, they see a big upswell in sales at two points in the year. One is back to school and one is the holiday season. Sure. And, and so this event was timed for that back to school event. So what they showed off was a bunch of stuff that I'm mostly not super interested in personally, but hits an important part of the market, uh, which is students, you know, uh, kids, families, that kind of thing. And so, and, you know, uh, we live in, uh, Mary Jo was telling me, you know, it's like, we're so used to these like super expensive, ultra light, ultra book type of computers. And, you know, they, the, the computers they showed off were kind of heavy and big and uh, we're very different from what we're used to, but of course, this speaks to a mass market. You know, that's who's uh, buying them. Yeah, that that's what's being sold every day. Yeah, they didn't say it this way, but I, honestly, their marketing message was basically, "We are not Apple, and if you look at everything they do, we're going to do the opposite." And they're not. It, it's not. And by the way, I don't mean to suggest that these things are cheap. I, I think they're actually durable and well made, but they're going for a low end of the market. And so. You know, laptops uh, of various sizes, uh, tablets of various kinds. Uh, they got smartphones coming out, not here in the United States, uh, not yet. Anyway, but what the, what they displayed um, was just like the three ninety nine, four ninety nine entry to yeah, right in there. So here, here's something interesting. I have a Lenovo here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got this couple. Uh, I can't even hold it up because it's like wired and sure. locked in. But what I got kind a, of Lenovo? It, I paid. It's a it's an idea pad. Okay. Um, it, it's not a quick computer. I got this right before the Windows 8 laptop started hitting the market and a lot of those specific requirements kicked in. Mm-hmm. So I paid like six ninety nine for this thing and it's running an AMD A6 Vision processor. I don't even know what that is exactly. Yep, sounds made uh, up. Yeah, so it's the form factor of an Ultrabook, but it's all plastic and mm-hmm. it's all cheap. The thing right. is pretty decent if you, if I mean... I could have probably gotten it for cheaper if I had waited, but if this was in the four ninety nine market, the four ninety nine yeah. price point, this would be a great laptop. And I'm always thinking, who would buy the big thick one compared to buying something that kind of looks like an ultrabook? Well, someone who can't afford the ultrabook. I mean, w- one of the things I've been looking at. Well, no, this is, is not uh, an ultrabook, Paul. No, no, I understand that. Oh, who would buy that instead? You said no. no who um, would buy like the big thick one if you have the two? In the same yeah, price yeah, point, yeah, yeah. why would you buy the big thick one compared I, to? I think the way the market's going to evolve is that the big thick ones are only going to be inexpensive. I mean, I, that's already kind of happened in some ways, you know. Uh, even the tiny, like a, a Lenovo uh, Yoga Eleven, like the small one, you know, the one that flips around and transforms and all that stuff. Um, that thing starts at six ninety nine. That's fairly expensive. Um, Acer was showing off a 
uh, geez, I just snapped on the name of it, but it, they were showing off a device that basically does the same kind of contortions. And it was um, a switch, an Acer Aspire switch. It's a 10 inch machine, sort of like a surface. You can unplug it from the keyboard, but the keyboard's a real keyboard. You can flip it around and, and plug it in and backwards and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, this thing will cost half as much as a surface and almost ha a little bit more than half as much as a, um, a Lenovo, you know? So, um, there's absolutely a market there for that kind of thing. It, it, not a bad little device. No, not at all. And I think the market is gonna, is flooded with these, you know, inexpensive devices. But we were talking right before the show that there was a stat put out that tablet sales have gone down for the first time uh, for a quarter. Um, actually, I need to verify okay. that. I'm not sure that. Let me just look at that before. Uh, okay. iPad sales have gone down. I'm not iPad sure. iPad sales overall. have gone down. But let's say, let's say it's slowing. I mean, obviously, it's going to slow down at one point. Yeah. Uh, and people are looking at that like, oh wow, look, it's it's you know that's a negative. People aren't buying these things anymore. No, I think people are still buying them. I I just don't think people are buying them every year. Yeah. I think yeah. we got used to you know oh wow you I gotta get the Nexus I gotta is, get. Um, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I'm so excited about this topic. <laughs> um, I <laughs> so tablet tablet sales didn't actually go down, but they were pretty flat. So. Tablet sales in that quarter a year ago were 48.6 million units. Uh, this past year were 50.4 million. So, you know, almost 4% growth, but, um, you know, flat. That's basically flat, under 5%. So um, that's cause for alarm because the this, this tablet market had been going gangbusters growth-wise for every quarter until now. Um, IDC and other companies have been warning us that tablet sales were slowing and that this was going to happen. I mean, so this shouldn't have been a total shocker, but now we can kind of look at one quarter where it happened and say, okay, so what happened here? Um, it's interesting because I have this sort of theory about technology that as you move forward, things move quicker. And so you look at something like a PC, which is, you know, 30 year market, it has this kind of growth trajectory and then it nose dives and then it probably levels off. We can't say for sure because it hasn't happened yet, but it looks like it's starting to kind of level off. And so it plateaus and it reached some sort of a natural level. And it's, it's very interesting, but you can look at that thing on a big chart, but smartphones and tablets are these things that, uh, you know, kind of have much smaller growth curves. You can see the same thing in the uh, distant companies like Microsoft over 30 years versus Google over 10, you know, it follows a very similar trajectory, but, over a very much shorter period of time. Um, I don't think tablet sales are going away. Like, I mean, even if tablet sales fall, like actually do fall overall, and that happens for a little while, I think this kind of thing has established itself as a market, and, and the market is whatever size it is. Like, we don't know what the ultimate size of the PC market is. Um, right now, we're looking at about 300 million units a year. I think it's reasonable to suspect it's going to go down from there a little bit, maybe 275, 280, somewhere in that range. But um, at this rate, tablets are a 200 million unit per year market. I, it, I, it's actually higher than that because obviously back to school holiday season, you're going to see higher sales than we're going to see in this kind of dead space in the middle of the year. Um, but I, I think there's a, you know, a point where tablet, maybe tablet sales in PC sales kind of hit each other and they're, they're in roughly the same shape or whatever. Um, so it's interesting. It's just interesting to watch it happen. I mean, um, We'll we'll see what happens. I mean, Apple will release new iPads, of course. Uh, other companies will release new tablets. Samsung will probably keep growing. You know, we'll see where it goes from there. You know, the PC market. Uh, if we compare the two, right? Like, let's look at the PC market. Let's look at the tablet. And and I'm going to talk about like an like a normal computer user, right? Like not us. Yep. Like the people that go into a store and buy a laptop every couple of years. You know, the story is that people are still using XP. And it's astonishing to me that people are still on XP and they're hanging on to XP. I talk to people all the time, like Jessica's grandparents. They have no interest in upgrading their computer. They're running a Pentium 4 on XP. And they're fine with it. Yeah. But they're buying tablets every couple of years. Like, I mean, they're on their third iPad already. Yeah, I do think that the tablet replacement schedule is going to be a lot faster than PCs. Even as these things mature, is it why is that? Is it because it's it's a new market and the products obviously the lifespan of the device is kind of set up where it only lasts a couple of years and then you got to be upgrading or I'm not even sure it's all that logical. I, it's almost psychological because what you want to be able to say is well, tablets are so much less expensive than PCs, you know, so they can replace them more often. The truth is not that's not really true. I, I think 
what happens is people space out their PC purchases because these things are very utilitarian. They get the job done, even if they're too slow. For the, for the minority of tasks that most people use these things for still, it's only occasional and it, it doesn't really bother them that much. Um, whereas a tablet is something you use all the time and you might, you know, kind of notice that thing. I, th there's kind of a, like an appliance type reaction you get to an iPad or another tablet where with the PC, you, you knew you could run utilities or talk to an expert and there'd be some way to speed it up, you know, and that you could do these things over time. And there was all this maintenance involved. And with a tablet, even though it's actually technically true that you can do some of the same stuff, I think the, the general feeling from people is, eh, it's an appliance. It's an appliance. If it slows down, uh, you know, Apple will always come up with a better one. So in two years, I'll buy another one. And they, they maybe don't go through that maintenance stuff because psychologically, that's not what the tablet's all about. It, that, it's fascinating because, I mean, to me, an appliance yeah, would be something that you don't change, right? Like, how often do you change your washing machine? How often do you change your toaster? How often do you <laughs> yeah, change yeah, yeah. your microwave? Well, you okay. change it when it breaks. Yeah, okay. That's the only time. You're not upgrading unless, When you know, it breaks. When it breaks. Well, when it breaks. I mean, so, um, look, even in those markets, those products are not as well made as they used to be either. Um, you know, my parents and your parents probably had the same washing machine and dryer and the same years. TV set and whatever for their entire, yeah. you know, until you moved out of the house. Um you know, we buy things today knowing they're not going to last uh, as long. And, and obviously, these kinds of devices that you carry around with you when you toss on the couch and everything, are, uh, you know, heavy have been less of a life, uh, a lifetime. But, um, yeah, I, you know, th there were, of course, there will come a time when there's basically no innovation to be had. I mean, at some point, yeah, faster processor, more RAM, more storage, higher resolution screen. I mean, how much can you do to entice people to keep buying and buying and you buying? You know, I also think the the tablet, like let's say the iPad, right? Because every year, I, that has one of the biggest followings out there. It's probably the most recognized tablet name out there. People are buying this thing every, let's say every other year. A lot of people are. I'm not saying everybody, yep. but I know a lot of people that are, you know, they had the iPad 2, now they got the iPad Air, and then they're going to wait another year and get another one. When I speak to people that constantly upgrade these, but they, they're still on, you know, Windows XP laptop from seven years ago, they tell me the reason why they don't want to upgrade is because it's a hassle to move all their data, all their files, all their email to another computer. I find that amazing because I have nothing on my hard drive. I mean, I literally keep right. I mean, obviously, nothing on it. Yeah. So, again, I think it has to do with perception. Um the PC is where you put data, you know, a tablet is where you access data. You know, you don't think about storing stuff on there too much, you know, I mean, maybe a movie or something. Um, you know, there's this feeling with the PC, like it's, it's like this giant well of storage and you can just throw whatever you want on it. And a lot of people do that. But the truth is you can access your data in the cloud from a PC just like you can from a tablet. And there's no reason why your PC couldn't be fairly lightweight from sort of a storage and app uh, requirement and that you could blow this thing away pretty easily and bring it back fairly regularly like you can now with Windows 8. Sure. Um, but, you know, people resist that. I mean, when, when I write about the new recovery tools that are available in Windows 8, Windows 8.1, I always hear back from people on the PC side who are miserable about this, even though these new tools are wonderful and they're really fast and they work really well, because it's not total system image backup where I can bring it back to an exact point in time when I had all my apps installed exactly the right way and, you know, th there's still this kind of weird mentality thing. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I, I've written about this. We've talked about this, I'm sure. You know, this notion that as PC users or technology users, it's so funny to me that we get caught up in, like, traditions. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. For something that is, by definition, leading-edge technology and shouldn't be adhering to those kinds of traditions. Yeah, I mean, you, you said something interesting on Tuesday when we were having a couple of drinks. MJ was there and... You, you said people are terrified when they hear cloud. They're just yeah. terrified and they don't know how to react. And it's this bizarre thing of where's my stuff going and who's getting access to it. And I think you're absolutely right. I think there is a strong group of people, PC users especially, that yeah. do not care for the cloud. They don't want to put their stuff on the cloud. So stuff like OneDrive, which is amazing sure. for the exact problem that I'm talking about, these people that are terrified to upgrade because they're going to lose their data and it's too much of a hassle, they don't want to put it on there. My dog agrees. I know. Well, 
I, I, you know, part again when you when you talk about the PC space, I mean, a, a big part of it is probably driven by IT and by enterprises, and you know, for a lot of people in those positions and decision making positions or in technical positions in those companies. You know, it kind of behooves them not to adopt the cloud because their careers are based around the fact that we do everything locally on PCs and on servers inside the walls of our company. Um, and, you know, I think that's I think that's part of it, too. I mean, these people go home and replicate that way of doing things on their own systems yeah. and they enforce these kind of rules on their families as if they're running another IT organization within their house. Um, and I've done this and I've, um, I don't want to call it a trap. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of natural thing to do. In fact, I think if anything, it's harder, um, to embrace new ways of doing things, you know, I, I, because again, we, it's very, I think it's very human and very normal for us to get caught up in these traditions, sure. even though uh, they're Paul, silly. I talk about it all the time. I, I still go through this old way of formatting, mm -hmm. right? Like I'll, and, and I'm going through it right now. I'm formatting my computer as we speak. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, building a new streaming box and I still do the stupid little stuff that you're not supposed to do anymore. Like go to MS config and turn off files and go to reg edit and, and disable stuff. You know, like I'm doing crazy stuff that I've been doing for the last 15 years. Paul, do you have any of these weird like traditions that you still follow with computing that you, you think are totally well, yeah, unnecessary uh, at this point? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yes, of course. Um, I'm like, okay, so like, what's an example of that? I mean, I still use a desktop computer, <laughs> you know. Um, I justify that in various ways, but it's probably not completely necessary. Um, I have a server. I have two servers, really, in my cellar. Um, you know, I back that stuff up to the cloud and all that kind of stuff, but it's it's still kind of there, and it's kind of a nice thing. So, by the way, you were talking about your dog barking. Yeah, I have a cat who, by its nature, is not as loud as a dog, but she is still... <laughs> absolutely just as annoying and she is desperate to get into my office and it is moments like this <laughs> where I, I ponder horrible things anyway <laughs> um yeah i mean the, the problem is when you come up in the pc world this is where your head's at you know um and but does that exist on the apple side do these crazy things exist that we do yeah. Well, you know. I mean, a Mac, I don't, I'm not as, I don't have as much expertise on a Mac, but you know that a Mac is basically a, P, it's a PC and it's, it's like Windows. It's so much more like Windows than it is like iOS from a, it's just a daily management perspective from a, okay, now I want to wipe out the operating system and bring it back. How do I do that kind of perspective that, you know, the tools, uh, the USB keys we may plug into the machine to make that happen or whatever, yeah. are all very similar. Um, and that makes sense because these things, you know, share a common, heritage they're the same kind of thing i i have uh, i have let go of a lot of these things on the mac side when i when i started using a mac and yeah. i don't know if it's because it's easier on a mac or if it's something new and i was able to kind of let go of these ridiculous things that i do with like hoarding my music and hoarding oh, yeah. videos no, th that's that's a uh that's like the canonical example <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? and even photos um, i mean photos i i I would organize everything by year oh, yeah. and by event. And now I just sync yeah. everything to Dropbox and it's sitting there. I never have yeah. to worry about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, the software one's weird uh, for me because like you said earlier, you know, you don't need a lot of apps anymore on the PC. And I have uh, for years maintained kind of a software share up on my server that had all kinds of stuff. And I, at, at some point I segregated it down. I had like, um, you know, apps and drivers. I have Mac stuff in there, mobile stuff. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and operating systems, you know, Microsoft and Apple operating systems. Um, and then I finally thought, well, okay, so when I blow away a PC and I want to get back stuff, you know, rather than having to really run around and find all this stuff, like I'll, I'll have like this always install kind of thing. And it's like a list of the stuff I need to install all the time. And so there's stuff in there like Photoshop and Office and Snagit and Adobe Reader and, you know, whatever, browsers and iTunes was in there, you know, when I was using that and whatever. And there's, there's actually, you know, 20 or 30 things in there. The truth is today, I only, I only install actually one thing all of the time out of there, and that's Photoshop because it's so big and I, it makes sense to have that download. Office. Ready. How about Office? Well, I install Office from the cloud. Okay. And these other things, like even if I were to install them, like iTunes, which I wouldn't, or... Handbrake or Snagit or Adobe Reader. You're downloading or, it. 
whatever, I'm going to download the latest version from the web. Sure. Like I don't have a copy of Chrome sitting here ready to go. You download that from the web. You don't really think about doing it that way. So I have a Chrome CD. It's like yeah. Netscape. You go to Copy USA <laughs> yeah, and get the so, Netscape CD. Well, it doesn't make sense to save these things anymore. Like you just so there are you know like I just did this a few weekends ago. If you resuscitate a laptop, um, like I did. I only have I do have five or six things I want to install. You know the VLC video player, um, you know Adobe Reader would be one, whatever. But I'm I'm always going to get them from the web, so you know it doesn't make sense. You know, and, and that goes back to what I was saying earlier about recovery. Remember, I said you know these PC guys they get so freaked out because you know these recovery tools are uh, that are really fast and wonderful in Windows eight, Windows eight point one, are really just for the modern stuff. Uh, that it blows away all their desktop applications. They want they want a system image backup that is an exact duplicate of their computer at some slice in time. That it has they have all their apps installed up to a certain point and it's all ready to go. And that's that is so old fashioned. All of those apps that are sitting there all ready to go that were like all up to date back in November are all horribly out of date now. They all need to be updated yeah. still. I'd rather just install them clean. And because there aren't like thirty of them, it doesn't exactly take all day. Like resuscitating a PC used to be like an all-day deal. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you it's something. it's like a couple of hours. You know? I, and you do other stuff. It's like no problem. I'm going to give you a and great the, example. The core of it takes like less than an hour. I'm going to give you a great example of what drives me insane on the PC side. So I'm reinstalling Windows 7 on the production machine. So you put in the disk, obviously, and you install Windows 7. Yep. And now you go through the entire process. And then you got to do updates. And you're literally doing updates for half a day. What baffles me is that why don't we have a system where it recognizes it says you know you put in your disk put you put in your key and it says hey would you like to grab the latest version from the server right sure. and you grab the latest version with all the updates one shot you're done why do we have to go through this crazy process <laughs> of installing yeah. it you got to yeah, do yeah. you got to do installs before you do sp1 i know like that that drives me nuts on the mac side i put in a brand new hard drive computer starts it goes hey do you want to i see that you don't have uh the operating system installed do you want to grab it from our servers at apple you grab it it downloads it it installs it you're done yeah, the latest beautiful. version makes it so simple that the install process drives me nuts but the reality is who's installing windows that's i mean really nobody this is the thing you know this by the way this is a completely different side topic um but I do wonder, you know, in these days, as it, you were talking about just now about the Mac and how modern it is for updating that kind of stuff. And that is really neat. Um, and I was sort of wondering, as you were saying it, you know, why doesn't Microsoft do this yet? And why, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and Microsoft in some ways with Windows is still kind of old fashioned um, licensing wise and, and other things. But there's a lot of kind of speculation that Microsoft's going to move to this like uh, subscription model that, you know, like Office 365, you get access to five copies of Windows Install it on five PCs, something low cost and everything. Hundred bucks you know, a year the, or something. Yeah. Yeah. But the more this moves forward, I think, you know, it's funny. I, I think for Windows, actually, maybe um, a subscription actually doesn't make any sense. That the future of this thing is that you just get Windows with a device and that's what you have. And that thing gets updated and you just don't worry about it anymore. I don't think, like you said, I think as you were alluding to earlier, I don't think anyone is installing Windows. Um, you know, Statistically, I mean, a very small percentage of very highly technical and enthusiastic people are doing that. I mean, but it's gotten it's gotten they, even harder, and I'll tell you why. If you have well, if you have a a newer motherboard and you're trying to yeah. install like Windows Seven on it, you got to figure out like you you can't do master boot record. No, but no, but you know what? It's you don't even get to this point. The first thing you have to do is buy it. You got to buy. Yeah. What the hell? What is that? <laughs> and by the way, you buy it for like a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars or whatever. It's crazy. It's it's a crazy amount of money. All right, I'm going to have to go uh, ahead. Let him in. Give me a second. I'm going to go murder my animal. While you're doing that, I'm going to talk about our Patreon campaign that we have started here for What the Tech. Uh, Paul and I have started a Patreon for the show. If you go to patreon.com slash what the tech, you could donate anything you want. You could donate whatever you want to donate to us, and we offer you bonus material. And uh, after each show, we record a bonus show, and then we post it on Patreon exclusively. Last week, we did about 45 minutes about traveling. And the airline industry. So uh, it could be anything. I mean, I have a couple ideas for today. We're going to be recording one right after the show. Uh, right now, I believe we're almost at 300 bucks. We have a couple goals set up. Like, I think we get to 1000 uh per show. Uh, we're going to do an ad-free model. We're going to come up with an ad-free live stream. 
if we get to 2,500, I can't, I'm just throwing the numbers. I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't have the website open. We're going to do totally ad free. We're not going to have any more ads. The only one that we will do is our audible pick of the week because it's part of the show and part of what we've been doing for about four years now. Uh, you go to patreon.com slash what the tech. Um, I think for 500, which we'll probably hit before anything, we're going to do our monthly call-in show where people call in and they talk to us and they ask questions and they tell us what they like and what they don't like about the show. So we have a lot of things going on. Paul's very excited about this. We were discussing how we're going to handle the money because now it's like, wow, there's money. We got to do something with it. Uh, Patreon.com. <laughs> right, right. We got to, right. we got to, we got to do something. Wait, so we can we make don't. money doing this. We can. Uh, at what price does Andrew destroy the Mac? I'll do it for for five grand a week. And we have to. I will. I will take a sledgehammer to this thing. Just destroy it with my hard drive in there. All my hoarded data will will disappear along with the Mac. Uh, that's patreoncom slash uh, You could support us there. And I want to thank everybody that's been doing it because it's been uh, tremendous to see so many people donate every day. There's like a couple of people here and there that are donating. Um, YYZ in our chat room says when it's enough to get to, when it's enough to buy a new MacBook Pro. Wow. Yes, that's exactly what will happen. Um, so, Paul, now you're back. Is your cat in the room now? No, the cat's gone. Okay. I've chased it away like a horrible person. <laughs> it's it's hard to explain, but the the cat the cats we have are so coddled that um, they expect to be petted, you know, on their own little schedule. They kind of run around the house and they go bother my wife for a while. They go bother me. The kids come home from school. They go bother them. And uh, this apparently is her time, and she and she's not going to be denied. Like she is standing up on two feet trying to push the doors open. She's crying. She's like pushing her little hands under the door to try to figure out a way to open it. Like she's just like fr like frantically not giving up. I need you know? to get and in. God help I look at her. And then she knows I see her and she, it makes her crazy. So I just have to chase her away so she get kind of gets the message. Like you got to give this one up. You know, we were talking about uh, my MacBook right before uh, we did our kitty cat segment. Mm -hmm. And... The Mac, uh, they're dropping the prices on the air uh, to the point that you could buy a 2013 model now at Best Buy for seven hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is really cheap for the Mac. Um, I, I, you know what? I, 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 I would even put this a different way. Um, Macs have always been more expensive than PCs, of course. I mean, even today, you could say like a portable Macintosh uh, starts at eight ninety nine and goes up from there, and it goes way up from there if you wanted to. But you know, the average selling price of a Mac is probably a little, only a little north of a thousand bucks. I bet it's like twelve hundred dollars, yeah. twelve fifty something in yeah. that area. Um, for this kind of machine, remember I, did, I just said the eleven inch uh, yoga, uh, yoga I guess eleven inch yoga, a uh, yoga eleven I guess uh, starts at six ninety nine. So it's still less expensive, but you know the MacBook Air is uh, considerably thinner and lighter and uh, gets much better battery life. Has a much more modern processor, a more uh, maybe powerful or better processor, if you will, like a core processor. Um, it's not. I would just say in this case, for this kind of machine, it's fair to say this thing is not more expensive than a comparable PC. No, you're absolutely right. In fact, I'm not even positive there are comparable PCs, at least to the 11 inch version. But um, it's right there. It's like the, it, this is like actually a reasonable price for this kind of thing. Yeah, seven ninety nine for twenty thirteen, eight ninety nine starting for the um, for the latest model. Uh, are they yeah. did they cut the MacBook Pro prices as well, or is this just the no, air? just the air? Okay, the air. I'm curious on why the air. So I, I you know, people are making uh, well, people, you know, <laughs> uh, Apple guys. I guess Apple bloggers are probably making a big deal out of like the slight processor bump, you know, like a kind of a minor uh, upgrade there. I actually do think that was just coincidental that they were intending at this point to cut the price on this thing. Um, and they were like, well, look, we can do this very easily. It's this part doesn't cost any more now. Uh, and uh, we can do this. And I think that I think the big deal is really I, it's the price cut. And I, I, I've thought, you know, we, you and I have talked a lot about how weird Apple upgrades are. Um, uh, they've been kind of milking this MacBook Air design for, for years now. To the point where most companies would have uh, upgraded the physical design of the machine, you know, uh, smaller bezels. Um, oh, yeah, the bezel. I, that that's exactly. They yeah. have not changed the hardware of the machine at all for many years. It's, it's, uh, Apple moves very slow, you know, along these ways. But what they typically do is 
bump up the specs, right? So uh, the fe- the processor will get better. The battery life maybe gets a little bit better. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Like they don't usually just lower the price, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's interesting that they, they did lower do the that. price. I mean, yeah. they don't do that a lot. And I, I, I think it's an indication that the world is changing a little bit. You know, uh, Mac sales were essentially flat last quarter. Um, iPad sales obviously were down. I'd love to see them cut the price on the iPad. I know they're never going to do that, but um, I'd love to see that happen um, and, and have iPads be truly affordable. But um, I don't, you know, for this kind of machine, uh, my daughter has a, a hand-me-down um, of mine. Uh, it's probably Core 2 Duo based, I bet. It's old. Uh, but she runs Windows 7 on it. Does she really? That's funny. And, uh, well, yeah, of course. I mean, she's <laughs> my, No daughter of mine is going to use a Mac. <laughs> no, but, yeah, she uses Windows. But, um, yeah, it works great. It's a great little machine. No, it's, it's a phenomenal a, machine. It's so cool. No, I, I, it's, a, it's a great machine. And for, you know, that price... Uh, I, I think it's a it's a serious contender for anybody that's you know trying to get into the ultrabook market. And you brought up something you said you know they don't they're pretty slow to change. Do you think they're slow to change because they're the first to market with this, or they're the first major? Uh, no, uh, I, this is their culture. Um, this is how they've been. I mean, but Apple, if you think about it, the the MacBook Air was a first of its kind. Really, the reason why it got so successful is because a Apple's marketing is is brilliant, and they could convince anybody to go buy it. But uh, they were first to market in a, in a world where it was big, bulky ThinkPads. They were able to put this beautiful design ad, and that's the first no, no, thing that people see. You, but I wouldn't get too focused on this specific product. This is what they do with everything. They they use the they make an iPhone, and then for three years, they have, use the same exact hardware design. And then they switch to the iPhone 4S, and then for three straight years, they use the exact same uh, hardware design. Like, they don't throw things away. They don't keep changing things, you know? They change underlying things because that's easy. They they really stick with their hardware designs. Um, they're they're I'm sure meant to be long lived. But you know, in the case of the Mac, in this case, I would say, God, there's so much they could be doing with edge to edge screens, a touch, oh, which yeah. they probably never do. But I mean, think about uh, how long it took them to get rid of you know, kind of do a uh, a larger screen on the 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 iPhone. Or how about the iPad? The bezel is a lot smaller now, but I mean, there's still a tremendous bezel top to bottom. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a bizarre thing that they do when they have a, have this idea and they have this. Uh, it's almost like they want to have this unified look across the board, and they're terrified to change something else. Because if you look at it, the bezel is the same on every one of their devices. It's a gigantic bezel, this black bezel around the around the, the screen, makes no yeah. sense. Why are you doing that? I I, I don't know. Yeah. Do you think I, it's just I, it's just their culture, or it's they have to have another reason for this? I just think it's the culture. I, I, I you know, and I, I guess what I'm trying to say though is there's nothing wrong with a, a good design that lasts for a while. But I think what they do is they they keep it in place for longer than makes sense. Sometimes, you know, uh, the MacBook Air is a good example of a, of a machine that you know. It has like the machine color bezel, not a black bezel, so it looks a little less modern actually than a MacBook Pro. It has a it, the bezel is humongous, which is unfortunate. Like you, you can't help but think they could fit a 12 inch screen in the 11 inch uh, device. They could fit a 14 inch screen in the 13 inch device. How awesome would that be? That'd be great. Um, they're still fairly low res screens. Like they still don't have Retina class displays. What, what's the uh, um, resolution again, Paul? Because I'll tell you mine. It's uh, the 13 inch is 1440 by 900, and the 11 is probably 1366 by 768 off the top. Of my head. Okay, so my MacBook Pro is 1280 by 800. Yeah, and by the way, if you bought a 13 inch MacBook Pro right now, that is still the that resolution. That is still the resolution. And it's insane. It's, it's such a cheesy kind of way to save money. Um, it really is because you're not, I mean, you're still paying a lot of money for this thing. I mean, you could technically get the i7 of this MacBook Pro. Let's let's look at the price right now for for a non Retina MacBook Pro, starting in yeah. at two two uh, twelve hundred bucks. That's crazy for that machine. Okay, like that's crazy. You put so what do you wait? Do you let's getting? do an i7. We're going to do an i7. We're going to do eight gigs of RAM because remember you can't change the RAM. I'm at fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> uh, see, okay, but what you're describing, like if this was the state of the art for Mac laptops today, this I would say is. Here's a typical example of something insane. Like this is, this thing is so much more expensive than a comparable machine. It doesn't make any sense. 
I don't even know why they sell this. I'm actually really confused by this thing. For 100 bucks more, you can get a Retina version that's thinner, lighter, gets better. <laughs> Battery life has amazingly better graphics. Yeah, why would you buy uh, it? Who would buy this thing? That's actually a good question. Who would buy this thing? I don't even understand why this exists. The i7, like, maybe? You people want the i7? I, I, I don't know. Yeah, because it's too hot or so. I, I guess. I don't know. I, I, it makes no sense to me. I'm, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on the Mac, but I I'm, just, in, yeah, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in a position to upgrade at this point. I, I have a 2011 yep. MacBook Pro, and I'm surprised it's lasted this long, honestly. Uh, this is yep. probably the longest. Uh, have I owned a laptop, like my everyday laptop, longer than this? No, probably this is the most I've used a laptop ever. 2011, so I'm three years into this laptop. I need to upgrade at this point. It's a three-year-old laptop. It's starting to struggle with certain things. Uh, but do I want to go and buy another MacBook Pro? And in three months, they announce this bezel-less computer. Or they announce, you know, all these new features that I'm going to regret because yeah. that's what happens every time I buy a Mac product. I mean, what it's May, right? So I, I would say at this point... November. Well, if... No. Uh, no, it's possible you could see... So, you know, they've announced something at WDC, I suppose, right? Um, I thought the cat came back. I was just going to if you yeah, were looking cat. for any evidence that cats are not smart, that would have been it. Um, <laughs> He's getting in from the window. Yeah, yeah. Mission Impossible style. He's, He's like MacGyvering down. Tethering down. That's yeah. so funny. Um, it is interesting, their price point, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens now. If this If this helps at all. Uh, so I mean I would also I, I think this is smart. I'm glad that they did this. Um I think that uh this is bad for Windows. Um for one thing. I mean, they're getting hammered on the low end by tablets, obviously, and by Chromebook too, by the way, which um, you know, is never gonna take off in Microsoft's core market of uh, corporations, but is absolutely seeing traction in education and with um with some individuals, which I find tragic, but you know, but it is, I guess there's nothing I can say about that. Um, and now on the high end, obviously the high end, we've always had the Mac, you know, um, but as the, as the high end of, or, or as the low end of the Mac kind of ekes in to, you know, down and down, uh, that becomes a problem. I mean, uh, I think for a lot of average people who've had good experiences with Apple devices, if they couldn't afford a Mac, but now you can get one for eight ninety nine. uh, that's a great price. You know, that's going to open up that world to a lot more people. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Paul, let's talk about the acquisition being completed. Uh, Microsoft has bought Nokia. They are part of Nokia, and it was a wait. Sm- what they did? What they bought Nokia? <laughs> Have you heard about this? It's crazy. They bought this weird company that does really good in Europe, but does awful in the United States. They people, bought Amiga. People don't know how to pronounce it. Is it Nokia or Nokia or? Uh, you, I rem- yeah. you know, my first memory of a Nokia was that that little brick phone that everybody used to play Snake. Yes. All my friends would go to Italy and, and Greece and come back with these like burner phones, and everybody would play Snake on it. My first memory of a Nokia. That was a great summer. Uh, but they they are now officially part of Microsoft. Microsoft. There was this weird. I I it was hard to kind of understand what they're going to do with the branding. And we kind of spoke about this on Tuesday and, and what your theory is and what mine is. And, uh, you know, they have the rights to the name Nokia for 10 years. Obviously, they're going to be using it in some capacity, but they've also hinted that they are not going to use it and they're going to call it something else. What could it be? Well, it's not worth speculating because we don't know. It's it, it, Hopefully, it will be a brand of some kind, you know, and not something stupid like Microsoft mobile or, you know, windows mobiles making a comeback. Um, you know, actually on windows weekly the other day, um, we were looking at uh, Lumia and, um, oddly enough, very little branding, right? And no Lumia branding. No, I, I have one right, right here. Look at this. No, it says Nokia, says on, Nokia the top. on it. <laughs> I got the windows logo. Yeah, I got Nokia on the back, and I got the AT&T logo on the back. There's nothing that says Lumia. Right. So obviously they have the Surface brand, which depending on your up, you know, your position is either a horrible, horrible mistake or is something they could work with. I mean, they could go in that direction. I, I, Lumia is not a horrible brand, I guess. Um, I don't know. 
I mean, I, I, I sort of compared it to the whole ThinkPad thing. Um, you know, ThinkPads used to have IBM logos on them. And now you see Leno Le Lenovo uh, logos, which is a little odd still to this day. But oftentimes you'll see like ThinkPad as well. You just see a ThinkPad logo and it's like ThinkPad. Yes, that makes sense. You know, But I mean, that's a recognizable brand. Yeah. So is Lumia a recognizable brand? And if it isn't, is Lumia a good brand, one that they could build something off of? And I don't really have an answer to that. I'm not 100% sure that is a good brand. Um, I, I never liked the number thing. Um, you know, Lumia 1020, Lumia 1520. I, I, uh, even though those numbers make sense, and even those no numbers make sense to use internally, I, I like things having name names, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I really like about the icon is it's, you know, it's, it's a name. A name. Um, that's a good brand, you know, a good name for a product. It's nice. But like, what does the 1520 mean? Right. Like what's the meaning behind it? Like the window. Well, I mean, it, 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 this is rough, but roughly speaking, you know, the low end devices have smaller numbers. And so the 520 is a small device. 620 is a small device. 720 is kind of a mid-sized device. 820 mid-sized device. 920 is a big device. 1020 big device. Um, the nine, uh, the icon, which is a 929, big device, 928, big device, 925, actually kind of a medium sized device, but, um, and then obviously the 1520 is a, a phablet. So but I mean, really it, it means nothing though. It, it doesn't identify size or like, no, it's not a 15 no. inch, you know, tablet. It's, you, know, you know what it is? It's a little more calm. Well, not really, not anymore. I was going to say it's, it used to be simpler, but uh, in, it's a lot like cars. Um, if you think about the way Mercedes or BMW brands their vehicles, we have a three series, five series, seven series, okay. um, Actually, they have a lot more than that now, which Six I find series problematic. They have way more. It's two series, one series. Silly. Um, but uh, Mercedes basically did the same thing, C, E, S class. Um, obviously, there are permutations, SEL and so forth. But they have uh, you know, roughly consistent branding over the years. Um, I think it was just an attempt to do that. But it, what it reminds me of is, um, you know, like HP products always have these numbers in their names. It's just... The HP twenty nine M. Yeah, you know, like what? Yeah. What the hell is that? Yeah, it's just too bad. The so IdeaPad S four o five. Yeah. Um, I hope the, they come up with names. I, I do too. I mean, I really hope that they do come up with some sort of naming system. And I and I hope I actually like the Lumia brand. I think it it identifies with the phone, and I think it's a great branding to have. Why not stick with yeah. the Lumia brand? Well, that's that's an option, right? I mean, they could use Surface for computers. They could use uh, Lumia for phones. So right, we'll see. I don't or, know. or go to Surface all around. Surface tablet, right. Surface phone, Absolutely. Surface laptops. I would love a Surface laptop. Yeah, I would also like a bigger Surface device. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we'll be... Kill our team, just call it the we'll Surface see. OS. I don't think we're going to be killing our team. Yeah. <laughs> but, kill the name. Uh, just kill the yeah. name and just call it... I mean, yeah. It's 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 fascinating. And someone says, you know, these are engineers that came up with the numbers, not the marketing department. And I love to see that marketing department when they go, and we're gonna call it the Nokia, you know, fifteen twenty, and right. they just have a a field day having to market that product. It's interesting. I mean, you know, Surface is an example. They uh, they've changed it a little bit but they're actually they've changed it a lot but originally you know if you think about the original lineup it's like surface which is the rt device and surface pro simple uh the second one's just added a two <laughs> you know uh surface mini is my understanding is the name of that product um where do you go i mean what if they make more surfaces you know what do you call those things what if there's a third or i guess it would be a fourth the new surface product do what well, Apple no, does. but the one that sits, you know, like what if they do make an Ultrabook? Um, you know, is that a Surface Book? And if it comes out in the Surface 2 time frame, do you call it Surface Book 2, even though there wasn't a 1? And, you know, you get into, there's all this crazy, stupid stuff that Microsoft has never been good at. No, but name, um, name and market, like when it comes to <laughs> marketing names, they've, they've always been awful. The only, yeah. I mean, Windows kind of made sure. sense, but maybe uh, not yeah. anymore because you're leaving the desktop uh, and you're not in these little windows. And uh, let me think. I would. Office. That. Office is a great. That's the that's the one they got. Yeah, Office was a good one. Xbox. Xbox is actually they've a terrible it. name. Terrible name, but they've done well with it. To Xbox, it was um, uh, Xbox. The Xbox name comes from DirectX 
box Jeez. because it was a box that ran direct x which is their graphics technology that's hysterical um that's a terrible name you know but it had the x in it and back around that time frame um early 2000s x was uh, in. microsoft was very taken with x yeah. x was extreme cool. everything was extreme right at mac os 10 had come out with the x you know it was everything x was cool um so we had that's why we had xp and we office xp um what did XP mean? Was there a meaning behind it? Or did you just thought it sounded experience? Sound? Experience, the Windows experience XP. Okay, and that was. It, and when you say what does that mean, what, what that really means is what they changed it to after the fact. It's not yeah. someone said this needs to be Windows experience. It was, it was let's contort this. We want to use X. How can we get X in this name? <laughs> you know, they, they sort of worked it from there. That's hysterical. Zune was not an awful name. No, but it failed, and so Zune has the kind of stink of death about it. But I thought the Zune brand was a good one. And, I thought and, it was really good. And that yeah, Zune, the something. Zune app uh, for Windows was a great application towards the end. I mean, they really got their act together, sure. and it was. Uh, I was a big fan of it. I'm one of the few sure. ones that was a big fan of it. No, I was too. Yeah. I was too. I still hear from these people. Every time I write anything about Xbox music, I always hear, oh, yep, and they've continued screwing this thing up, and it's never been right since it was Zune, and uh, I get it, uh, but... You know, it's a different world. It's and then they have, and then they have these brands world. that, like, Media Player, that, yeah. like, it's still there. Sure. Like, Media Player still exists, and nobody knows why. It still looks <laughs> the way it does and does I, what it does. You know what? I, I, um, uh, <laughs> this doesn't happen very often, but I got a voicemail through my exchange system from work. And when I clicked on it, it played in Windows Media Player. <laughs> Boy. And I was like, this is the only time I ever run Windows Media Player. You know, it actually played in Windows Media Player. I, I think we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, we have a live audio stream also for the feed. So all the time our live stream is on and you could listen to it on on Stitcher and, and tune in and all these iTunes radio. But we're also on the Windows Media Player Guide. And it's their little section where you can listen to radio stations. Oh yeah. Yep. Paul, if I told you that majority of my audience is coming from that for the live stream, I mean, I'm talking like desktop. I'm not talking mobile, mobile, Stitcher and TuneIn. But as far as the desktop goes, that's what people are listening to. How like how do you even f discover that? I have no idea. But I mean, I, it's installed and that's what people use and that's what people are getting used to. That's just how it works. It's amazing to me. Um. Also, before we uh, we wrap up and we do our, I'm, we're going to do our Q and A on the bonus show. I decided, uh, not the Q and A, okay. the, yeah, the Q and A. I mean, it's it's three questions each. We could we could you know some of them uh, are going to be quick and some of them. And if you have questions in the chat room, obviously send them our way. We're not killing the live stream for this. Uh, we're still airing it live. It's going to be on at one o'clock uh, right after the show. But I want to talk to you about Skype uh, giving away group calling. And we had a little interesting discussion on, on Tuesday about Skype and where they're headed and what they're doing. How do you see this evolving? Like if you were to if you were to want extra products, like if they were to add anything to Skype, what would you want person? Because you use Skype a lot and I do it you yeah. know, for, for work and and you know, when I'm communicating with people. What kind of changes would you like implemented into Skype? Because I think this is great that they're giving it away, but it's still yeah. funky. It doesn't I don't think it works in HD yet on all their marketing imaging that they put out everybody's in hd and everybody's widescreen i've never gotten right. it to work in hd yeah so I, actually you're touching on what i would change about skype which is that i think they need to and by the way in many ways they probably are in fact doing this right now but i think they almost need to step back like microsoft did a long time ago with uh, trustworthy computing stop adding new stuff and just figure out the basics and get it right on everywhere um obviously they have platforms like um you know, uh, the Windows 8 modern stuff that's, uh, you know, really far behind or new platforms like uh, the phone apps and stuff that are really important to the future of the platform. But they need to get this stuff consistent across all of these apps and 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 just make this stuff work correctly. Uh, I was chatting with somebody this morning on Skype using just like the instant messaging part of it. And I swear to God, 10 minutes into it, all of a sudden, my phone, which was in front of me, bleeped and I looked down, and what I saw was a Skype notification that contained the first thing that this other guy had typed to me from 10 minutes earlier. And I was like, you've got to be shitting me. Are you kidding me? Like, wh what? And this is like the quality of this app right now. It's That's how far behind it is. It's like a nostalgia tweet. Like, hey, I just uh, 
went back in time and, and saw this message you wrote for me earlier. It was fun to relive that again. You know, like I, they, they need to figure this stuff out. You know, they, they add Skype integration to outlook.com, but they don't provide any way for you to turn it off. Like what? And then they don't fix it in, in its ring problem, which it had for like nine or 10 months. Um, they really need to ratchet it down and get this stuff fixed. I, I, I would like to see them just take a three or six month break and just make fix things everything. consistent and make it work. Is this know? because they they acquired this company and they're trying to fix things I that you know? I can't explain this. I have no idea. They're, I they exist in their own little world. I don't know. Well, it's bizarre because we were talking about you know some of the things that I like some of the things that I've discussed with them and yeah. uh, somebody you know at, at the Skype team, uh, and it's astonishing on how. They are not aware of these problems, and they uh, don't. Well, they yeah. don't understand how people use their their product. And, you know, I'm a right. small percentage of their user base, but there are a major networks using Skype for communication, and they are in. They're having the same problems that we have here. You know, Twit is plagued with the same exact problems that we were plagued with here. Uh, some capture devices work, some don't. Sometimes it's in HD, sometimes it's not. It has nothing to do with your bandwidth. Uh, there's a stupid little return video thing that I'll show you here. When I go to Paul, look, there I am right in the bottom left corner. Why is that there? If I want to make it that small, yeah, 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 why do I need to see it? Why can't I just double click on it and kill my video back? I mean, that's it's the wrong button. Uh, you know, it's things like that. And you tell them like, well, we don't think that our users are using it that way. Well, yeah, they are. So now they have that Skype TX thing, and I'm hoping that this thing solves a lot of our issues. But, you know, it's a $1,000 box, and I'm going to have to buy four of them if that's the case. I'm guessing it's 1000 bucks, by the way. I'm not, I'm not putting a price out there. I'm, I'm yeah, imagining I, it's going to be right. between 500 right. to 1000 depending on the model. But, you know, you're talking about it's expensive. And for someone that does four Skypes, you got to do four of them. It's just weird. Like, when you talk to me and you go... This and this and this is broken. They go, well, I, we don't know that. We've never done that. And I realized something about a lot of developers. Um, good developers use their product. A lot of develop, but most developers never use it the way that the average user uses it. And I've encountered this with video production software. I've encountered this with uh, audio devices where people develop things because they think it's supposed to work that way. And then they don't use it as an everyday device. They maybe, you know, they use it once a week. How do you troubleshoot stuff if you're not actually actively using <laughs> yeah, it? Exactly. Right. That's right. my problem. You know, we used to use a software here at the network for video production. We went to Wirecast and we were using another one before that. And the developer is not a broadcaster. He doesn't broadcast anything. He just developed the software. So when you would explain to him like frames are dropping or there's a tearing happening with the vi with the video, he goes, "No, I don't see that on my end. It it's you. It's not me." That's a problem. Well, they need to get this right because uh, they have competition from FaceTime, from Apple, from Google Hangouts, whatever. I mean, I, this is it, – it's time to start showing up, you know. And I, the the problem for Skype, I think, is that they've um, been allowed to be run as some kind of independent organization for a long time. I don't understand how that's even possible, but they have. Yeah. And um, I really think that needs to be fixed. And they really have a tremendous, tremendous hole of the market, Skype. Yeah. If you think about it, I mean, Google Hangouts, oh. it's doing it, but the quality of Google Hangouts is nowhere near the level of Skype when it comes to video and audio. It's not there. Right. And it's not intended to be competing in that sense because, you know, you're using the average person with a lower end dual core laptop should be able to use Google Hangouts in H, you know, for whatever they're doing. They're, they're, they're making this thing to work on Chromebooks. <clears throat> so obviously it's not going to have this super high quality, but they're getting there and they're catching up. And that's not good for yeah. Skype when, you know, primarily the business is peer-to-peer -peer communication. So that's my rant about Skype, Paul. <laughs> it gets get me there. so worked up. I'm sweating. I, I'm really I'm really sweating now. So worked up over this. Um, I don't know. It's just baffling. Hey, uh, did you see the, before we wrap up, did you see the, the possible renderings of the um, Amazon phone? No. So a source, uh, let's see. So actually, Boy Genius Report is leaking this. Okay. 
Uh, I don't have the image here, but I could send it to you. And they're saying this is the, the first clear look at Amazon's smartphone. This is coming. They've it, obtained yep. an a image from Amazon's debut smartphone. It kind of looks like an iPhone. Yeah. Um, that's it. This is one image. That's all that, we got. That's, that's all we got. Is that one image. And surrender. I mean, obviously. But I... It's a nice phone. Nice looking phone. Looks exactly like an iPhone. Look, even the plug on the bottom where the position where the speakers are looks like an iPhone. Yeah, uh, it, right, it, it has. Yeah. Um, it has the three buttons like the Lumias would have, but they're on the wrong side. They are um, on the wrong. That would drive me nuts. I think that would drive me nuts too. Micro SIM on the side. It doesn't to have a camera button, but that's common on Android know. devices. Yeah. I mean, the chiseled edge of that looks exactly like an iPhone. Yeah. And, and it has like a tremendous bezel top to bottom. Uh, yeah. I wish I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't have this ready. I should have pulled it. No, no, I ha- I'm looking at it. I, uh, I no, I'm apologizing. To oh, the for viewers. the screen, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks, I mean, the Dell sells this. It looks nice. It's elegant looking. Yeah. I, I mean, it's going to sell. Are we sure this is real, though? I mean, you know, they, I don't know. They, they're claiming that it is. They've obtained it. I don't know what that means exactly, how they obtained it. But, I mean, it, it makes sense for it to look like this. Because you could even see those camera sensors on the corners of the screen. Um, interesting, there's the FCC, fi- FCC information on the back. Yep. So that, that to me, kind of points that it probably is real. Uh, I think they're going to sell a lot of these. I think they're going to do well with this. How could they not? I mean, they have they have a tremendous uh, well. Actually, website. I can tell you how they could not. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me, uh, we were talking earlier about that uh, tablet results right from the last quarter. Um, Apple wasn't the only company to fall. In fact, they weren't the one that fell the hardest. The one that fell the hardest was Amazon. Um, Amazon only shipped one million tablets in that quarter, down from one point eight million in the same quarter a year ago, um, and that's good for less than two percent. Um, market share that's a 47.1 percent drop uh they fell harder than anybody in the quarter harder than Apple, but like almost three times as hard as apple so um I, you know just putting something on the amazon homepage doesn't guarantee success and i i think we talked about this earlier but uh phones are different right i mean um a, a 99 150 uh, dollar tablet is kind of a an impulse buy but when you're signing up to be on a wireless carrier i mean it's that's a different equation and so we'll see yeah i don't know well, well i just wanted to bring it up it, i just saw it happen and uh i thought it was a good time to bring it up yeah no, it's, um, it's i'm no it's interesting i'm, I'm very, actually very eager to see it yeah me too i mean i'll probably get one in my you know i'll probably get one uh if i'm hoping that they do the right thing and they do this unsubsidized thing that you know i've been dreaming about for years 199 unsubsidized bring it to whatever carrier you want Maybe they could team up with AT and T, where well, they are saying the phone could be an AT and T exclusive. Interesting, yep. and Prime Data maybe a monthly data package. What is Prime Data? Oh, Prime Data is their um, yeah, interesting. It's fascinating how they're how they're trying to get into this market. All right, Paul, yeah. let's wrap it up. Uh, if you're watching live, uh, we're going to be recording our after show where we're going to talk about. Uh, actually, we're going to be answering some of your questions today. Uh, that you've sent over the last couple of weeks. Um, and if you want to send over questions, you can do so by sending it to guysfromqueens at gmail.com. I get them. I try to respond to all of them. Sometimes it, it gets overwhelming, and then I sit in a corner and I cry when I get so many emails, uh, and I don't know how to respond. So I apologize to those people, and I'm really late with some of those emails. So uh, hang in there. Uh, winsuperside.com, all things Paul Therat. Uh Anything coming up on there? Anything special? On the Super site? Yeah. Not really. I got the, you know, the one breaking news thing that happened while we were recording the show is that Microsoft is supporting Windows XP with a patch for that IE flaw. Um, so I'll be writing about that today. But oh, no, look no, at nothing. Microsoft flip flop. <laughs> exactly. Look at, look at them once again, flip flop. We saw yep, it with the Xbox yep. and now we're seeing it with Windows. Typical. Typical Microsoft. Yep. Um, yeah, I saw that. I saw that announcement too. Uh, hey, support our Patreon campaign. I spoke about it a little bit uh, earlier in the show. You could go to patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash what the tech. 
We have a link in the show notes. Uh, you can support it by giving anything you want. And uh, the more you support us, the more stuff that we're going to do. Like Paul and I were talking about doing a live broadcast. Uh, you know, we're, we're hoping to be able to do a lot more of these things. We do a live thing. You, we're going to play uh, Dunk the Therat. We're going to have a <laughs> dunk tank. You could throw your MacBooks Wait, at it. And you could throw, you know, copies of Windows at it. Actually... We're going to supply everybody with a, uh, a Windows 7 Home Premium Edition box, and you just got to throw it at nice. the dunk tank. That's what we're going to play. Uh, dunk the Therat. And then in the, uh, in the water, it's little, like, Apple logos just floating around. See how creative I am, Paul? See, see where my mind goes? It's a little disturbing, <laughs> really. I've been, I've been thinking about this for months. Uh, you can follow Paul on Twitter at the rot you can follow me at andrew zarin also guys if you want to help us out you can support our, our us by using our amazon affiliate link that's gfq.co slash amazon every time you purchase something we get a tiny little credit and it goes a long way uh, i appreciate it because every time we do upgrades so right now we're going to be upgrading our cameras we're going to be doing that with our amazon uh you know the money that we build up in amazon credits uh, and then we cash them in and we get you know five thousand amazon credits gets you a camera uh we'll see you all next week guys good night